okay? Uh, next round, and the, uh, we did way too much stand up and training today. I'm tired. Uh, next round in the uh, reverse triangle series is reverse triangle from the stand up. Um, I'm doing things a bit differently with this one. Um, just one takedown for the reverse triangle, and then I'm going to show two, three entries for how you can get there. Um, I think that's a bit more of an efficient way to work on these things. So we're starting, which is basically clinched up. We're basically clinched up. So I move my hand in the inside so that I take off this collar tie. I go and I put my head 90 degrees to his head. I've got my forehead and the top of my head literally in his ear, okay? Um, this is generally, this kind of my head and his ear is a very good position for me in general because it breaks his posture and it protects me from his counter attack. So even if I let him get a good, good hold on me, try to do something. I can still keep him at bay. Yeah, you see, I almost threw him right there, actually. He tried to go for something, I almost threw him. If you are in the stand-up and you can get this position, even if he gets better grips, you're still actually winning the position because you've got a nice head control here. So from here, I break his posture with this hand. I go into this knee, actually better if you go on the outside, and I basically go this way and pull the knee out of the way of my knee. So I land directly in the side of the pole. From here, just like what we saw with the uh, reverse triangle from top position, put the arm down, step over, and now I've got my reverse triangle. Okay. Showing that throw one more time. So, again, stripping it off, moving in, and putting my head in his ear. I can pull on this arm to get my pressure deeper in his ear. This hand goes on the outside, and I basically just walk forward from here. Sorry for the headbutt. And from here, just put the arm down, step over, and I can go into my reverse triangle choke. Okay, same throw, like I said, this time with an entry where we're assuming that we don't already have the clinch, okay? Um, generally speaking, for me personally, um, I actually don't like clinch. I don't like to clinch up like this with someone who's heavier than me. Because, um, I mean, the whole thing is we need to be able to snap down and he's heavier, he's stronger he's going to be in an advantage on me in this position. So I like to try and get an angle as soon as possible. Um, a lot of times if I'm sparring with somebody, they'll see me doing this because I'm waiting to get this in. Now I've got my angle, now I'm in a better position. But I, I don't like just squaring up and standing in the main because if he snaps me down, he's got the advantage. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He's in a better position to snap me down than I am. So, assuming we're in like this, in our basic stance, we're going to assume we have distance and we're going to use the distance to our advantage. So, I take a wrist and I'm going to do an arm drag, but not your typical arm drag like this, um, because this is honestly, I think, also a bit strength dominant. If he grabs my hand and pulls me, <laughs> yeah, again, he's got the advantage. So what I'm going to do is grab and I, use this motion to bring his elbow up. And in this position, I have a mechanical advantage now. If he starts pulling, I can pull him better than he can pull me. So it's a kind of a, it's almost a reverse Kimura grip. So the normal Kimura would be like this. It's almost a reverse Kimura, and I'm using the stay stabilized position to be 
be able to pull him forward. So from here, pull, and I pull with my upper body. And I connect his arm to my chest. I take my other arm, bring it to the side. Turn and here is where I put my head in his ear again. I grab the far arm, break his posture, and from here, I'm going to go slow because I think you're about to hit the bank. Yeah, we were close, that's right. Okay, so again, just to show, I grab and I, I don't just pull, I, I'm, I'm honestly slapping his arm and using that whole motion to pull him into me. Grab a collar check from here, head in his ear. Now I can go to my more dominant positions. Now I have my takedowns. Okay, so one more entry and then we'll call it a day. entry for the day. Um, just so you know, I had to be careful with his ears. I, when I was showing this to him in the, in the break, he just kind of, oh, oh, watch out for my ears. So if, I'm, if it looks like I'm going slow, it's because I'm trying not to break his ears. So um, this is actually something I, I find myself, like I said before, I don't like to clinch up with people this big. I'm a small guy and I'm old. So, but if we get into the worst case scenario and he clinches up on me, then no more clenching. If he clinches up on me, what I'll often do, bring both heads to his he uh, hands to his head and snap that head down. And from here, bring it to the side. And again, now I go for my head in his ear. This is where I have to watch out that I don't bend his ear. So again, head in his ear. And I can go for an overhook here. And the arm is right where I want it. Pull it in, bring his posture. Go to the outside leg and take it down. And again, I land right on the side control and can immediately go into my reverse triangle. So, one more time, we clinch up. I take both hands on his head, snap it down, put him to the side, collar tie, head in his ear. From here, I can get an underhook so he doesn't get away from me. Pull that arm in tight, start going towards the leg, block the knee, and bam. And those are a few ways you can get to the reverse triangle from the standing position. Next week, we're going to the um, side triangle. That's actually kind of cool. It's, a, it's kind of a mix. You can also I'll be, I won't be going into detail, but you can also do some chemo attacks from that position as well. It's a nice kind of double trouble position. So, but reverse triangle is now finished. So see you next week with the side triangle. Thanks.